Okay, the purpose of this video is to discuss problem number 13 out of the Sipser textbook on theory of computation. Uh, that's problem 0 0.13 out of chapter 0. So let's take a look at this one. Um, basically what we got to do is we got to show that um, that there has to be a click or an anti-click in a given graph, any graph, um, of at least one half log two n if the graph has n vertices. So let's first understand a couple things. First thing I want to make sure we, we know about is the concept of doubling, uh, raising it to the power of two. So if we have if we have some number, let's say it's one, if we double it, it's going to be two, which is basically two to the one. This here is two to the zero. If we double that number, it's going to be four, which is two to the second, and so and so on and so on. So basically anytime you you double the number, it's two to the n plus one. Whatever the n this is two to the n, this is two to the n plus one. Well the same thing works when you are having it, taking half of something. So basically you have you have four numbers here, you drop down to two, that's going to be log base 2 of 2, which equals 2, you see? And so this 1 is log base 2 of 2, which equals 1. Sorry, log base 2 of 2 to the 2. Log base 2 of 2 to the 2 equals 2. Log base 2 of 2 equals 1. So basically, when you increase the number by doubling it, you're basically raising it 2 to, the, to that power. But if you reduce it by cutting it in half, you're giving it log 2, log base 2. So that's important because that comes in at the end of this proof. So now let's take a look at the next concept. The next concept is the graph. An undirected simple graph. So it's undirected simple graph. The problem doesn't necessarily state that clearly, but that's that's got to be in there. So there's no loops. There's no arrows and no self loops in the graph. There's no uh, there's no double. There's no double. Um, uh, whatever loops like that in there. It's not simple anymore. So <clears throat> that's the next thing. Then the next thing you have to know what a click is. Well, if you have a click. Let's suppose we have these vertices, or nodes, and we have six of them. Uh, a click would be any time you have um, a complete graph within, within a graph. So let's suppose that, this, that these three, everybody knows each other. Just like in a click with people, in a click in a graph, all the, graphs, all the uh, nodes are connected to each other. So I want to include this one in here, this one would include in here. That becomes a click. If you have a um, if you have a set where none of the nodes are connected, that's called an independent set. So consider this here. That's an independent set. Even though these are connected to other nodes, they're not connected to each other. So this is an anti-click or an independent set. So once you got those concepts together, I think we're ready to tackle this proof. Um, the next thing we have to understand is what a Ramsey number is. A Ramsey number is the minimum number, an integer, the minimum number of nodes to satisfy a couple of conditions. So we'll take the case of click and anti-click. The Ramsey number R of AC is the minimum number of vertices, nodes, uh, where A is at least, uh, the, the, the size of the anticlick is at least A.
and uh, C is at least the size of the click. So let's suppose we say we want R of 2, 3. And we want to have, we want to, we want to make a graph that's the minimum number of vertices where, where one of these has to be true. So let's try this. We have R of 2, 3. We just have one, one vertex. Can we make, can we make, let's, let's say, uh, yeah, so A is 2, C equals 3. Can we make an anti-click of 2? No, because we only have one node. This, this one node is an anti-click of 1. That's, that's true. Uh, but we can't make one of 2. But that's okay, because we could do the other one. Can we make a click of 3? Hmm. No, we can't. We do have a click of 1, but we can't make a click of 3. So, this, so, so 1 isn't going to be big enough. 2? Still can't do it. We can, we can make an anti-click of 2, but we can't guarantee one or the other. And this is where it comes in. So this here is an anti-click of 2. That's true. But we can't guarantee it because we could have a connection and now it's no longer guaranteed. So this one has an anti-click of uh, 1 and a click of 2. Still doesn't satisfy the situation. Okay, suppose we have a uh, anti-click of basically if we have if we have one node, we cannot have we have anti-click of one, click of one, it does not satisfy it. If we have two nodes, we can have anti-click of one, uh, sorry, anti-click of two, click of one, or we could have any a, any click of one and a click of two. Those are the only two options. So um, this one satisfies it, but this one doesn't. So we, it's possible to construct a situation where it doesn't work. So that means that that number is too small. If we go up to three, then we can have any click of, let's say, any click of three, click of one. 3 is the anti-click, and each one of those is a click. We could have anti-click of 2. So anti-click would be this one, anti-click would be that one, and click of 2. Or we could have anti-click of 2, click of 3. That's possible. Anti-click of 2, click of... Uh, well, no, this is just any click of two, click of two, still. Or we can have a click of three and an any click of one. Those are the only options. So all of these, all of these are okay. All of those satisfy that, so we have ourselves the minimum number. So, so in this case, R of two, three equals three. And in fact, R of two, any number n, equals that number n. So let's just go ahead and skip past that. So now we understand what a Ramsey number is. So now let's get to the good part. Basically, all we got to do is remember that every vertex every vertex is part of a click and an anti-click. Every vertex is by definition because it's at least a member of a, of a click of one and an anti-click of one. At least that. So that's number one. Number two, um, if we take any vertex take any particular vertex um, it is either a 
connected to over half the other nodes, vertices, right? It's either connected to over half of them or it's not. It's connected to less than or equal to half of them. So if it's um, if it's connected to over half of them, then what we're going to do is we're going to create two lists. We'll collect. We'll, we'll have a list, a list A, and a list C. This would be an anti-click. Now this would be a click. The anti-click list and the click list. And so we'll basically we'll take this. If it's connected to over half of them, then we will add, we will take, a, take any arbitrary vertex, we take any vertex, and we'll add it to a list C, list 2, list 1, whatever you want to call it, the click list. We're going to add it to that list, and we'll discard all uh, nodes, vertices, whatever. I'll use, I'll use the word vertices. Not connected to the, to this vertex V. We'll call this vertex V. So if we were to just pick any old random vertex out of there, if it's connected to more than half of them, we'll put that in the click list, and then we'll get rid of the ones it's not connected to. So we're trying to find the biggest click. If um, if it's connect or at least a big click, if it's connected, if it's not connected, if it's not connected to over half. We do the opposite. We add to list A the anti-click list, and we discard all of the vertices uh, connected to V. We discard the ones that are connected because we don't want the ones that are in a click. We want the ones that are an anti-click. So in this case, let's suppose V was in a click. We put V over here, and we discard all the other ones that are not connected to it. If 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 it does not have more than half of the uh, uh, um, vertexes connected, then we put it over here, and we would disconnect all the ones that are connected to it. So what that's going to do is, at each step, and I'll put this here, at each step, you discard less than half of the remaining nodes. So that goes back to that discussion we were having about log base 2. We're discarding at, 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 more, at most half. I mean, no more than, no more than half. So, um, so if we go through this process step by step, then what's going to happen is we'll have at the very most log n steps. Actually, it's one half log n steps because we have two lists. And since, and one of those two lists is going to have to have at least one half log n entries. I mean, in a perfectly balanced situation, each one might have one half log n, but if there's even one difference, it would be skewed one way or the other, and we'd have at least one of them would have more than one half log n. So let's take a look at an example. Take a look at an example. We'll create this um, graph and we'll have it like this, say. And we will keep track of the vertex, the degree the uh, the amount remaining and um, whether it's in 
the click list or the anti-click list and then the discards. So let's take a look at what happens. Let's pick let's pick node 1. If we pick if we pick node 1, then we're going to add it to whichever list. Well, what's what's the degree of 1? The degree is 2. How many nodes are remaining? 1 2 3 4. So there's 4 remaining. Half of remaining is 2. Now the the problem said take take uh, put this one in the click list if it's greater than the number of remaining nodes. So, so 2 is not greater than 2, so it's going to be in the anti-click list, node 1 is. And so we're going to discard the ones that are not, sorry, we're going to discard the ones that are connected to it, because it's in the anti-click list. So we'll, this one's connected to 1, and this one's connected to 1. So 2 and 5 are gone. Now if we take uh, the next nodes, take 3, if we take 3, then we're going to take, that's going to be of degree 1, because we don't count these other ones, so it's going to be degree 1, and uh, the remaining, there's only one remaining node, so it's 1 half of 1 is 1, oh, sorry, one is 1 half. So is, is it greater than the number of remaining nodes? Yes, it's greater than that, so that means Node 3 is going to be in uh, the, the, the click list. So that one's gone. Now we would we discard all the nodes that are not connected to 3, but 4 is connected to 3. So that's the one. 5's already been discarded. So now we're going to take node 4. It's the last one left. Its degree is 0. And so 1 half of 0 is 0. 0 is not greater than, that, than 0, strictly greater than So C is going to be added to the anti-click list. Sorry, so node 4 is going to be added to the anti-click list, and there's nothing left to discard. So now we have a click list that has one of them in it, and we have an anti-click list that has two of them in it. Well, <clears throat> the number of nodes, n equals 5, so 1 half log 2 of n equals... Um, 1.16, I calculated it out, you can check it out, but that's basically, we have to round up, so that's going to be 2. And we can see that that, that 2, the anti-click list, is in fact um, you know, less than or equal to 1 half log 2n. Now, this did not give us the largest click. Because right, we have a click of 3 staring us right in the face. The purpose of this is not to prove to get the best click. All we're trying to show is whatever happens, no matter which of these nodes you pick, you're going to get either a click or an anti-click with at least one half log 2n uh, nodes selected in it. So, in one of the other of those lists. So I hope that helps you uh, understand the material. Question 13, well, I hope that helps.